I'm Eric Chemi, and this is Politely Pushy. Welcome to this very special episode of Politely Pushy in honor of Women's History Month. I've got three of the best women here in media joining me on the program today. I'm excited for this conversation. The topic is wholeness with a W, W H O L E, wholeness. And I'm joined by Chris Belke, the B O in Bospar. She's been a PR industry guru, maven, foundress going back decades, <laughs> has seen it all, done it all. I've got Jane King here. She started Lila Max Media. Lila Max, those are the names of her kids, has been an on air business reporter for over a couple of decades now, has been just a fantastic person. You see her from the NASDAQ. You see her from the NASDAQ. And Joanna Lucas, who is executive director of talent acquisition at Biomarin Pharmaceutical, worked at Genentech before that, fantastic career. So you three know a lot more than I do. So I'll just be asking the questions, sitting back, the answers all come from you. So first off, thank you to all of you for making time to join me here today. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So Eric, we do know more about being women than you do. That's you know, true. You know 100% more than you. So I feel a little awkward being here. I got to be honest with you, right? It's like, they wanted me to host it. Okay. But I'll, I'll try to stay out of the way. If you have better questions to ask each other, go ahead and do it. I, I do know what our title is women work and wholeness. Like I said, with that W, what does that, what does that mean to everybody? I'll start with Chris. When you hear the word wholeness, what does that mean to you? Yeah. And I'm glad you're starting because actually it's a thing of mine. <laughs> And, you know, the idea that people say to you, how are you? And, well, how am I? Well, really, how I am is how everybody I take care of is, right? Is my family together? Is my work together? Have I done this project? And I started thinking, in fact, someone said to me, but what about you? You never mentioned you. <laughs> and I started thinking, we women, you know, we're nurturing, we're great, we keep everything going, but... How often do we stop to think, hey, what am I doing for myself here too? It doesn't have to be a lot. But to me, wholeness is not work-life balance. It goes way beyond that. It goes to, am I getting what I should be out of life every day of my life as I go along mm -hmm. here? And that mm -hmm. takes work on yourself. It's so not, not work-life balance. It's interesting you said that. It's not work-life balance. It's beyond work-life. It's more than that. Yeah. Jane, what do you think about that? Um, well, I, when you first mentioned it, I thought I had kind of this saying that I came up with a few years ago when I started the business was excellence, not perfection. So I was like, if I just try to do a good job every day and not be perfect at everything, being a mom and a job and all that stuff and have a little bit of a sense of humor about life and the absurdities of life, but yet still am diligent in my job. Um, you know, I can kind of get through all this and stay sane. So I think, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's time management, I think is the absolute key. Um, and staying ahead of things, kind of planning. I, I write down stuff a couple of times a day to make sure I don't forget anything. And I still forget something every once in a while. I forget something on Saturday. I feel horrible about it. Um, but um, I think it's, it's just, you know, managing your time, planning, making time for everything and enjoy, enjoy your weekends. And, and Joanna, your job's interesting because you're bringing in the talent, right? So you're, you're, looking at this both ways, right? For your own self, your own career, the leadership team that you're dealing with, but also the people that are coming in the door that are answering this question for themselves and they're all on their own individual journeys. My guess is you have a, a complex, nuanced answer because you see it across many dimensions. That's so funny you say that because I was thinking that my answer was less complex than Chris than Chris is for sure. And then, you know, so one of the things that I I... I took probably a traditional approach to the to the word wholeness, which is for me, caring and being attentive to mind, body, and spirit. And I almost never am attentive to all of those things simultaneously. Only when one of them kind of starts to feel out of balance mm -hmm. do I pay attention to it. So I think that wholeness for me means more diligence about the attention to those things. But like Chris also said, when you're a woman, primarily, you're thinking oftentimes of the wholeness, not only for yourself, but everybody that you care for or are responsible for, including then, as you say, then, Eric, as as candidates, when we bring them into Biomarin, and in particular, in the past several years, I think all of us have doubled down on wholeness or wellness. We're paying much more attention to those things um, for everybody than we have in the past. You you said, Joanna, that you 
can't do all of them simultaneously. You tend to course correct only when one of them kind of goes off the rails a little bit because it was it brings me to my my next question is actually going to be what are the barriers to achieving wholeness, right? As you describe it, what are the barriers that that prevent you from getting there in its in its fullness? Yeah, so um it's it's not that I can't, it's that I don't. So it's not that I can't, it's that I don't. Okay. And the barriers, oftentimes, I like to blame it on time. I say the barrier is a temporal barrier, but the truth is it's, it's really a, attentiveness and, and, and making sure that I recognize that that's a priority. Um, one of the things that I was talking about with one of my colleagues just yesterday is that as professionals, we've taken on these cultural expectations that we believed were important and critical in order to be seen as a professional in our work life. And oftentimes that just compresses all of this work into what we try and do within a 24 hour day that really isn't, isn't possible. So the barrier really is an understanding of what we've taken on that really probably isn't necessary to take on, which I think we've discovered some of those things during the pandemic. I know one person here gets it really early. Jane gets it very early in the morning because her job requires it. Do you find that getting up early means, okay, I have more time to be whole because I can get to everything. <laughs> you're on air. You're on air every day. Do you find that it's in a way, it's not like a real job, right? It's like a different kind of job, right? It's not like our typical classic office job. It's very public. People see you. There's no hiding it. There's less pretending. Mm -hmm. and, and you're either there or you're not there, right? There's no, there's no hiding it. So, <laughs> Do you find that it's it's more of a challenge? You're working weird hours to satisfy all the morning newscasts that you do. How does how does that work for you? Mm. Well, thank God for concealer. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it, I get up at 1.30 in the morning. Well, one thirty wow. in the morning. I thought it was like three a.m. Yeah. So no, I know I get up at 1.30. I actually still during the pandemic I started recording some. Well, I started doing everything from home, and then as I went back to the Nasdaq, now I still record a couple things at home just to get those out and for timing purposes, and then I go in. And and um, I think it, the morning is is tough. Um, like I've got a you know friend who wrote a book, and I'm going to a party tonight. It starts at six. I'm going to be there right at six, and I'm going to leave at six thirty. So I already know <laughs> party um, animal. Uh, yeah, so you know, you know, you know, kind of, you know, what your body can take, and and I can kind of do those things, but I can't do them every day. So that's the only night event I have this week, which is good. So it's just it's a matter of balancing all the time, and, you know. In some ways, mornings are easier. I don't deal with the traffic of the commute. Um, it's kind of peaceful in a way. I always get a seat on the subway on the way back, um, but it is kind of hard, you know, on your body. And I would say, you know, if we're talking about one thing that is given up, it's exercise. And my husband owns a gym, for goodness sake. Wow. Like, I really, and it's five minutes away. Like, I really should make it there. There's you no know? excuse. There's no excuse. My husband owns a gym. Is the, You have the key 24-7. You can go there at 2 in the morning if you want. I could. I would not do that. But, um, yeah, I mean, so I can't even, you know, I can't. And I really need to start making time for that. Um, but my life has just gotten busier, I feel like. Really, it's a pandemic. I, I started doing some more interviews and things like that with people globally, and things got busier. But I really, you got to take care of your health. None, the rest of it doesn't matter if you're mm. not healthy. So mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, that's my... The, the health one is interesting because I, I want to bring Chris in here. Having been a, a company founder, right? You've had to hire people. You've had to lay people off. You've seen people work their way up the ranks. You've seen people get up the ladder, fall off the ladder. How much of it do you think relied on their health or relied on them not being whole and it all fell apart for them because they, they couldn't keep it all together? They tried mm -hmm. to compartmentalize and in the end, it caught up to them. Yeah, that's a good question. I think I've seen that mostly really with women who are trying to raise children at the same time that they're trying to, you know, succeed in the very demanding world of public relations agency business where, you know, you have a dozen or more clients and everybody, there's always, there's hardly a minute when some client doesn't need something. Mm. So it is incredibly stressful, but really, I don't think it has to be like any magic thing. I mean, I'm somebody who, books, if I have to think about a project, I'll book shower time. I'll say, oh, it's okay. I'll be in the shower for 15 minutes. That's when I'll figure that thing out. You know, when I'm thinking wholeness, I'll say, 
I'm going to be in the shower. I'm going to find time to read this 10 minute thought piece. And I'm going to think about that in the shower. I mean, you go back to the old Jefferson airplane, feed your head, you know, it doesn't have to be a big deal. It just has to be these little breaks that you take for yourself, that there's more to the world than just getting the task list checked off today. So that's what I'm talking about, not going, you know, to a week retreat or anything. We're not people who have time for that sort of thing. But, um, but don't waste shower time not thinking. That's the advice. I'm not about to shower. I'm in the shower. I better be thinking about something. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Do you think women are expected to be more whole? Do you think there's an expectation because of family, relationships, friends, and work? Like you said, the hardest employees you saw in terms of the challenge were the women who are trying to raise kids at the same time. But you don't say, oh, men who are trying to raise kids at the same time. It just doesn't come up. So do you think there's a challenge? I'm, I'll ask all of you that a woman is expected to be more whole across every dimension. Could I just say one quick thing? To me, the definition of whole is a slightly different. The way you said it, like people expect it of you, people expect you to cover all the bases and get everything done. That's different. Wholeness is yourself. Only you can expect yourself to be whole. So it's self-defined. looking out for you. So people expect you to do a bunch. How do you fit time for yourself in, in the midst of that? That's, yeah. I like to dig dig more into that. Dig more into that? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me more. The, the idea that if all of your definition is that you have successfully achieved every project you sign up for every five minutes of every day, you're not usually signing up for projects, whether it's Jane getting to the gym or, you know, saying, I'm going to, or let me just say, Joanna and I met because we're both on the board of a organization that feeds people who are ill. You know, that's not easy to make time for. And it's not like we spend a ton of time, but boy, you know, you get something out of that that is different than what you get out of your everyday task fulfillment. Well, wherever you can chop off something that goes beyond what life itself will suck out of you if you let it without letting any room to be putting stuff back in yourself. <laughs> Right, right. That sounds so, very messy, I know, but it, it does go beyond task management. To me, that's the whole point. Right. It's it's not letting task management derail you. It's 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 being more in control of everything you want to do and not letting the outside world dictate everything. Make a little room for yourself and make yourself something, not just a list of what you achieved for everyone else. Right. right. So it may not be an achievement at all. It may just be your yeah. own personal achievement, something that no one knows about. It's only in your own. In your it's own only theory. important to you when you keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Right. What do you think, Jane? Um, and by the way, I don't know if you hear my phone ringing. It never rings until I'm recording a podcast. <laughs> Spam well, call. I heard a phone ring. I didn't know whose phone it was, but I was going to say, just as Chris was saying, don't let every task derail you. And then there's a phone ring. It never there. rings until. Um, so I, I do notice that people kind of default, like with the kids, will come to me first for their schedules. So I think they're still because you're the mom. Right. Yeah. And I think there's still yeah. kind of an expectation with all oh, set up, you know, they're, they're 12 and 14 now. So they're a little more independent, but younger, it was like, you know, I was kind of the one who, you know, monitoring their schedules. Now they're in a lot of sports and my husband's like a sports guy. So I'm like, you're in charge of that schedule because it's complicated. And um, so I just say, you know, every weekend, okay, what do they have this week? Cause I still have to kind of take them around to stuff. So I think there is still kind of that expectation you know, that the mom is the caretaker. Um, although, you know, I think a lot of our friends and stuff know enough now. And my husband owns a business, so the kids always know they can go there. You well, know, that's they, the gym we heard about a few minutes yeah, ago. Right. <laughs> so they go there, they know the code to get in, they take their friends there as a ping pong table. Um, so now that they're a little old, it's a little easier. But I do think there is more expected of women in terms of covering all of those. Bases. So actually, if you think about what Chris is saying, because more is expected, it's actually harder to be whole. There's less time for what does Jane want to do? What is the thing that Jane herself personally wants to do that no one can derail? I say, you got it, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I do, uh, you know, sometimes I will just go to the little, on a Saturday and get a 15 minute massage. I mean, I'm like, that's great. You know, that's awesome. I mean, right now it's, you know, and sleep. 
Um, my whole family gets that I just went on an overseas trip and I told him, I said, when I come back, I'm going to be jet lagged and I need to sleep and my door will be shut. And they're all like, okay. <laughs> so, you know, they get it now that they're a little older and they know kind of, you know, what the boundaries are. I think it's just a matter of, you know, getting, getting the sleep, taking care of yourself in your can, but then spending time with everybody too, when you can as well. I think it's really important. Eating dinners together. We try to eat dinners together. I try to ta talk to them. We study together. I mean, we just, you know, it's a matter of doing every, you know, it is, it's busy. Um, but it's, you know, trying to do as much as you can. Joanna, which, which version of wholeness, as we sort of started with one definition, we hear Chris's more, more in a way introspective version of it. Which one resonates more for you? I think, um, so I, I agree. I was going to say that wholeness, the definition of wholeness differs by person. And I don't think that there, I don't think that there is a clear delineation in whether or not men or women are more capable or are expected to be more whole. I would definitely say that we have our task list so that the distinction between what we do and wholeness right? I think resonates with me. I think as women, our task list is more diverse. We have more discrete and distinct things on our task list that we need to cover the bases on, as Chris had described, than perhaps a man who doesn't have as much um, family responsibilities on his task list. That doesn't mean that a man's task list can't be completely untenable. I think that still exists and you see a lot of our male colleagues just as over um, extended as we are, but it shows up in a different way. I think it's harder for us because our, because our discrete responsibilities are so varied for us then to create boundaries that don't end up kind of flexing all the time. So I, I think I think it's hard for all of us and it, it, it does require a clear distinction between what are our tasks, what do we need to set aside in order to mind our wholeness? Are we able to do that? The focus on wholeness, do you think it has any impact, positive or negative, on what a woman's role in the workplace? Because all of you work, you're all trying to balance this. Chris, I'll start with you. In that sense, is that focus on wholeness, does it have an impact, good or bad, on what that woman's role in work is? Yeah. And let me start by saying, when Jane talks about her young kids, I mean, I think there's a period of having young kids that all bets are out the window. <laughs> it's sort of, it's a time that is just takes what it takes. So I don't think that's... But forget wholeness. Just be alive for five years. <laughs> We're checking I mean, keep the kids alive. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, but otherwise, yeah, very much. I think, you know, for my definition of wholeness, you have someone in the workplace that's more of a, a bit of calm, cool, collected, thoughtful, measured. I have people a lot ask me, how do you go from being tactical to being strategic? And I say, well, it's not whether you're an entry level person or a senior manager. You're, you enter, you're as smart as you're ever going to be. It's about how you control your thought process, how much you allow your mind to work versus be you know, distracted by everything around you so that you come across frenetic and splintered versus, you know, there's people who just open their mouth and like, my God, it's like, how did they think of all that on the spot? <laughs> what, what about the impact of the pandemic? Like Jane mentioned it a little bit, how the pandemic changed you know, working from home, doing more from home. In a way, you got busier. Now you're doing global interviews, right? All this stuff is is busier. I would have thought that the pandemic would have made it easier for people, possibly. Maybe maybe I'm naive, but easier to be able to have more time for themselves. Is that is that not true? It was easier in some ways. I mean, I was here. Um, my kids were here. They were doing remote school. My husband was here for a time. He was doing Zoom workouts. Um, and, um, you know, I didn't have to commute. I was able to make them breakfast every morning because I had a little break. I'd throw in a load of laundry during, you know, live shots. <laughs> um, so, uh, but it, it, I think what happened during the pandemic was we all saw, so, oh, we can kind of do business in another way. And then, and some of that stuff worked and it stuck. 
like these global interviews. I was doing interviews with people all over the world. And before that, there was always like, oh, when can you make it to New York? When are you going to be in New York? We can come to the NASDAQ studios. And I was like, we'll do it on Zoom. And so um, it's, you know, I, I think, you know, I think that's going to stick around. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's one of those, I just always try to, my, my what's going to be on my tombstone someday is I've, I'll figure it out. Like, so <laughs> Like when, the, when they told me at the NASDAQ, you got to go home and I don't know how long it's going to be. You know, I ran around, bought a camera and scoop lights and at Home Depot and just figured out a home studio. I didn't have any idea it'd be 18 months, but just, you know, you just figure things out. You prepare yeah. as much as you can and then you figure it out. Joanna, what about from your perspective, dealing with the employees coming in, coming out, work from home in the office? You probably heard stories, right? A lot of anecdotal stories about this pandemic is wrecking my life or making my life better. Or I, are these the things I want to change back, the things that I want to go back to normal? Was there a general theme in terms of certain kinds of people really resonated with the changes that came and other kinds of people just couldn't handle the changes? Wow, it's been going on for a little over two years now. Know, so right? two things years, huh? have evolved a lot for each individual person. So I would have answered that question differently for each person two years ago than I than I would now. And speaking of Jane, speaking of figuring it out, I'm <laughs> I'm as you guys know, I am dialing in from my mobile and getting a call completely disabled my ability to hear you guys. So sorry, I dropped off and we started there. That we is, kept going. I was, we didn't miss I was going, I was thinking, should I raise my hand? And I was doing this thing. But anyway, so uh, I'm back now. So um, I, I, I do think that in the beginning, it was the most hard for people with young children. And I, I just was shocked at all of the complexity of their lives mm -hmm. and needing to deal with that. And I think that they had the hardest time at first. What I then realized, because I am single, I do not have kids, I live on my own. What I realized though, that over a period of time, the value that they, they got out of it, both for people with young children, as well as actually older children, was they said that the silver lining was that they became more um, in touch with their children and their lives over the past several years than they could have ever hoped to if this had not happened. Mm -hmm. So for those individuals going back to the office is a, and their kids going back to school is absolutely a takeaway for that one particular component around intimacy with those in their family. And I think that they wouldn't give that back for the world. Um, on the other hand, the people who didn't have that complexity in the beginning, people like me, I felt incredibly isolated. And I actually think of myself as an introvert. I was shocked to realize that I really missed the day-to-day -day collaboration with my peers um, in a way that being isolated at home or you know interacting on Zoom, it doesn't... Um, you know, we're, we're social animals. We need to create and collaborate with others. And I think that's a, that's a big missing part. Now, we are welcoming everybody back into the offices this week. And I see a whole range of reactions. What do you mean by welcoming? Change. Meaning you're invited back or you definitely have to be back? Uh, you definitely, yeah. <laughs> Good, distinction. Good question. Good distinction. <laughs> We, ha we are pretending like you definitely don't have to be back, but we, ha we have your eye on, we have <laughs> our eye on you if you're not back. Mm. So there's that. Admitting it from your level, because they never actually admit it that straightforward. They never, no one in senior leadership says, we have the eye if you don't come. So I appreciate the honesty. Well, I, well, if, well, we are saying we are not policing it, but we are paying. Okay, now I should say I'm speaking for myself. I'm speaking my, for myself. I understand that this um, I understand that this is an expectation of me as a leader and of my team to provide opportunities for everybody on my team to come back and collaborate. You're right. It's it's there's a it's little tricky. there's a little funny talk around it, but but I like what you were saying. You were saying a second ago, wide range of reactions. Oh yeah. So so as I had mentioned, I um 
I had to travel to Hawaii. I have a, you know, a family situation here. I traveled here on Friday and I had a series of meetings and big, you know, lunches um, crafted for me and my team this week that I canceled. And I said, you know, welcome back. The expectation is that everybody will be on site between two and four days a week. That is the expectation, the opportunity. And what I told them is that when I get back next week, we'll, re, we'll reinvigorate this sort of celebration of coming back. So I canceled my meetings. I was on a call this morning, global HR meeting. There was not a single person on my team that was on site. They were all dialing in from home. So, so they, I think that they feel like even though we've said that we're not watching, I think that, that they didn't go in because I'm not there. Right, right. Yeah. It, it's a weird first week back, right? It's like, yeah. oh, <laughs> you're all back. I'm in Hawaii of all places. But if you're not back, I got my eye on you. That's, we got the message loud and clear. Oh, so oh my goodness. You're funny. You think the pandemic, though, has changed priorities. It's it's forced people into true reckoning with like what Chris was saying earlier. What are the things that matter to the individual, the inside priorities that nobody sees that sometimes all the tasks can take away from? Chris, do you think the pandemic has forced that reckoning of like, okay, now that my schedule has been changed and certain things have disappeared off of my plate, other things have been added, I'm reprioritizing things I didn't even realize should have been a priority. Yeah. Well, you know, interesting. We, our company seven years old. We started the day we opened our doors, we were virtual. It was an experiment. Can we make it work? We're a hundred people. We're completely virtual. It works fabulous. Wow. Better than all my years of running companies that were physical, to be honest. And we're actually getting talk about what you call people have to go back to work from work. <laughs> um, we're getting people <laughs> wanting to join Bospar because suddenly their companies are inviting them back. And, you know, now that they've seen Paris, they don't want oh, to go. Because of people like Joanna, they're all calling you and saying, can I just <laughs> work from right. home? That's right. That's right. Them, so they, <laughs> but, um, you know, I just want to say one thing personally that was actually delightful about the pandemic. You know, all of our friends, I'm sure it's true with all of us, we're all busy people. You try to get four people together who are friends. It's like, oh, yeah, two and a half months from now, we're all available on that day. Well, we started early on what we called Sundays at 7, and I drove it, being you know, this virtual company here, and took nine of our friends all around the country, one in Hawaii, and we started faithfully every Sunday at 7 p.m. for an hour. We all had drinks together. Most people didn't know each other. It started as some people who come here to dinner all the time in Bodega Bay, California. But all these other people who had heard of each other and over the whole pandemic, these people became so close, they now fly in so we can all be together. A family was born. And we would not, I mean, have traded that. Now, nope, can never get more than three or four people at seven on Sunday. One thing that was so beautiful was that you'd say, Hey, it'd be great to chat one night. When would you be available? And the answer would be anytime. <laughs> I mean, I just loved that. <laughs> so there's something there, hopefully, we can keep about my God, there is some time for the stuff that we love. You know, not that now that works back, it's we can't yeah. do it anymore. Jane, I, want to, I want to turn to you, Jane, because you're a professional interviewer. You probably have better questions than I do. Hearing what we've heard so far, what are the questions that come to your mind? What's a question you want to ask Chris or Joanna? <laughs> Gosh, I haven't even thought about it. Um, hmm. Well, this is you know, Women's History Month, right? So, I mean, I, I guess maybe let's just start with an overall thing. Like, what do you think of, you know, where women are in the workforce? What do we still need to, you know, to go from here? Um, I mean, what, you know, what, what are some things that you see now that could improve for our daughters? I'll just say one quick thing, because yesterday we actually, Trisha Heinrich, who's our chief content officer and myself, were interviewed on our staff meeting for our careers at PR and tell some war stories, right? And one of Trish's war stories was, I mean, because some of the young women were saying, is it real, are things any better than they used to be? And Trish said, well, at my job at Texas Instruments, 
they, before they hired me, they asked, they said, there's some travel. Will your husband allow you to travel? Mm. She needed his permission. <laughs> and they went, no. And I said, well, I'll do that one better. I was the first female general manager at the world's largest PR firm. And before they gave me the job, they said, are you planning to have kids? Because if you are, we're not going to put all this investment in you. Mm. It was all allowed back then. Yeah. You know? So I think we've come a tremendous long way. And I frankly, there's lots of inequities, but I don't think it's men versus women anymore. I think the women coming up, the, the men coming up the ranks in the 20s, 30s, 40s, I think they're as pro-women as the women are. You know, I think the roots of the terrible putting down women really go back much earlier mm -hmm. into our country. And we've come a huge way. And I think it's important that we recognize everybody. Everybody has their challenges. <laughs> There's nobody who's got it perfect. Very true. Joanna, that was, thank you, Jane. That, that was that was good. I like that. I'm thinking about from Joanna's role as HR, hearing what Chris said, thinking about are there the programs in place, like either at your company or other companies, colleagues across the industries, from, a, from an HR point of view, are there things that companies can do to help women get those inner priorities? Because if they, like Chris said, if they can get their inner priorities straight, the things that they want to do, making time, whether it's Jane 15 minute massage on Saturdays, right? The things that, that you don't see as a task list, but the things that help you be more whole yourself, my guess is it makes them better employees. It makes them better spouses, parents, all the things that as a flywheel, they just become better to work with, right? You have less of a problem employee because things are derailing around their life. They don't have themselves figured out. So it's hard for them to focus on work. Is mm -hmm. that something that is a, is a topic of discussion or there are programs that, that you and your colleagues work on for that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So for women specifically, I want, I do want to um, agree with Chris on that. There is less of a delineation now than ever before between what it feels like to be a woman in the workplace versus a, a man in the workplace. I will say, though, from a recruiting perspective, you had mentioned, Eric, that I worked at Genentech before coming to Biomarin. Biomarin's a lot smaller of an organization. Genentech had a lot of support for mothers. There was two or three different on-site daycares. And so women could bring their children to work and drop them off and then pick them up right mm -hmm. down the block um, every day every day. Um, Bimarin doesn't have that. And that really limits our ability to attract the very best women who have young children. It's a very, very, very hard thing to be committed to your work and committed to small children simultaneously. But look at how far we've come because Chris was saying when they were interviewing her a long time, because like, if you're planning on having kids, we're, we're not even going to hire you. And now Joanna's saying, you know, if we don't have a daycare here, we're not going to get good employees. Right? That's <laughs> right. That's stressed. right. That's right. In fact, in fact, you can't, you can't even, you cannot say that. You cannot ask that question. That is an illegal question yep. now. Yep. And before you could, you could judge a, a candidate based on the answer to that question. But imagine That's also Chris gone said, a long way. I am way. planning on having kids. But I would like for there to be a daycare here. <laughs> That's Chris, would have, Chris would have gotten laughed out of the room. And, and, and actually, we provide support for f fertility treatments. I mean, it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. And yet there is more for us to do. But the other thing that has come about as a, as a um, result of the pandemic, we've all had a lot of stressors, both at work and outside of work. Um, work actually, to me, has become incre in increasingly more pressurized because I can be on all the time, and there is an expectation to be on and available all the time, and more frequently than before. Right, because you have 24-7, you've got a phone, you've got That's a camera, right. let's go. That's right. right. I, and I think what we've seen is in, in, is, in a, is a rise in, in stress and anxiety, and people have told us, and so we have created... Um, we have created a benefits platform that is tremendous, that includes free um, um, uh, work with, a, with a, a mental health counselor. It includes daily yoga classes that you can do online. It includes all of those things. And I truly do believe, being the recipient and the, the partaker of some of those benefits, that it makes me feel better in general, but more committed to the organization that I work for because they 
care about my well-being and my wholeness. And I think that that's a dramatic difference than, than before. Chris, I know you were gonna jump yeah. in earlier. Well, just to that point, I mean, that's one of the reasons we tried going virtual when we started BOSPAR is because so many great women come up the ranks and then when they start having kids by their own thing, they can't, you know, there are no daycares most places. So we thought, well, if they can work from home, they don't have to choose. And that has worked out so beautifully, I can't tell mm -hmm. you. I mean, we have a both mm -hmm. family of a few dozen kids that have, you know, been born and grown up during our seven years. And, you know, most of them, they get a nanny that comes in a few hours while they're going to do their calls and all. Everything is flexed, you know, got to go to the doctor this morning, but I'll be on after eight o'clock tonight or whatever. It all works incredibly well. And so all these women with all these skills and talents are not needing to sacrifice, you know, being able to contribute. And at the same time, they're with their kids. Like mm -hmm. Jane said, that's so precious to be able to be with your kids. How much how much is just the flex hours? Like Jane has very flexed hours, very early, <laughs> early hours. How much of a lot of this could just be solved by we all work flex hours. So there's time to, to be whole. There's time to do the things that I want to do. Cause maybe the thing that I want to do is right in the middle of a nine to five, right? The, the one class I want to go to, or the one thing that I want to do for myself, I can only do it because my kids are in school or they're in daycare and, and everyone is taken care of and I can do it from work in a way, work hours. And then I'll, I'm happy to work at two in the morning when everyone's asleep. Like how much of this world, because like Joanna said, we're always on, but, but you know, Jane's working weird hours, right? Like, is this an opportunity that, okay, we can all flex our hours a little bit. So in the same 24 hours, we can be more efficient with what we want to do. Maybe we can be more whole, but maybe, maybe yeah. it doesn't work. I don't know. Maybe it's, everyone has to still be in the kind of office at the same time. We have not found that. I mean, there are, we have worked, we have created a science around being able to collaborate as teams virtual and, you know, in any day you get like 24 emails. I've got this, I've got that. You know, I sort of, why do I need to know this? But it doesn't matter. People know when they need to be somewhere. You've got a client call, you've got a team call, whatever. This, you must be present. But all the other time you're doing your own work. So whether you do it at one o'clock in the afternoon or 10 o'clock at night, it doesn't matter to anybody. So that's just the way we work. I mean, people do flex all over the place. As long as you got to show up when people expect you to yeah. be there. That's it. <laughs> Jane, what about you? No, uh, I think it depends a lot on the industry. So I think there are some industries where you have to be somewhere, like a nurse, for example, um, can't, you know, have flex hours. Um, I have to be on the news at certain times. So even though they're weird hours, they're really not all that flexible. I wish they were more mm -hmm. flexible. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think for many industries like public relations, I mean, it's, it's, it's still about results. And, you know, if you're getting the job done and, and getting the sales done and meeting the clients and all that, I think that that's what the bottom line is. Joanna, when you, when you have exit interviews, people leaving, any regrets that, that come up? Are there certain regrets of like, if I had done this, my life would have been better. I could have worked better because I didn't take care of myself because I didn't put myself first. I, I have to just stop now and, and reset my life. Do you find that's a theme? I'm getting back to this wholeness thing. Because people aren't whole in their whole self, then it's like, I can't even, I need, just need to start over again. Mm -hmm. So I, I have to make a disclaimer. As a recruiter, I don't have a lot of access to the exit interviews. I'm on the plus side, you only get not the in. negative side. <laughs> I, didn't know, I, didn't see, I didn't know that they were chipping shared. Okay, the people that you brought in, here's maybe why people left later. And so how do we adjust who we're bringing in? Well, I, I do hear I do hear the themes. I do hear the themes. And historically, the themes have been the themes have been about development opportunities. So oftentimes within an organization, you get siloed and there's not a lot of opportunity to do other things besides up. And there's only only a few opportunities that open up. And everybody wants those. And so, it's a pyramid, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. narrower at the top. Yeah. Exactly. And so oftentimes people leave because they don't feel like they have the development opportunities within the organization. What we're actually finding, so this isn't a really a wholeness, it's a one part of wholeness, but it's not in the way that we've been talking about wholeness is almost um, same as wellness in some ways, right? So 
what we have been hearing more recently and what I understand actually from talking to someone who has seen more recent departures, people are leaving because of the time wasted in commute. So as we're asking people to come back into the office, you can't unring the bell of having the value of three We lost Joanna there. We lost Joanna, but we got we got the unringing the bell. You back, Joanna? There you go. So unring the bell. It was two hours, three hours. What else? Oh, I got another Joanna. call. Oh. oh, there we go. She's back. <laughs> See, but this is you know this we can smile a little bit. This is what it is, right? When when we're doing things remotely, right? We're doing our best. Someone gets a call, a connection drops. But but Chris is interesting. She was talking about the commute. It's just what you said. Their companies are asking people to come back into the office and people are saying, no, I, I, I can't make this work anymore. I've spent two years d living my life a certain way. I've, re I've redesigned my life in a completely different way. And now at bigger companies, let's say they're saying, come back to the office or calling up Chris and saying, I want to work from home if at least I can make this transition. Because maybe that two hours a day is the difference between me feeling whole or not feeling whole because that two hours is that gap, right? It's that margin of all those things that were the me time that you were talking mm -hmm. about earlier, Chris. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I hope companies look at the, at the potential that they have, that this has created. So many of them are, oh, it screwed everything up, right? We have to get people back on site. That's what we know. My God, one of the incredible things for us, we hire absolutely the best people because we don't care where they live in the whole country. I don't know where most of our people live. I have no idea. And they don't, don't need care. to be in office. I think that all the people that live out on yeah. a farm far away, there would be no office for them hours away. When when I ran companies down to the Bay Area, I mean, we scrambled to try to get good people in the Bay Area. You know, the Bay Area has been growing with technology for decades. We can only be as good as the people who could get into our office every day. Isn't that stupid? Wow. Yeah. Also, you talk about wholeness, like Eric, you said, what if the the class you want to take is at one o'clock? That's contributing to your wholeness. This is something you want to do. We're not going to stand in your way. Do it, Eric. We encourage it. We want you to be a whole person. I mean, it gives companies an opportunity that goes well beyond what they have when they're tethered to geographic circles. But, but Chris, how much you think of this is still driven by the person, not the company, right? Like all of this still has to be driven by the individual's desire for here are the things that make my life complete. And I, I can't necessarily. Well, I, guess no. I mean, it's driven by what's allowed. Also, if you join a company and say, oh, they're keeping an eye on me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. Joanne is, Joanne is hiding in the corner. He says, I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> no, That's exactly what we don't say. An eye on people. Um, and I'm not saying we don't keep an eye to make sure that people are where they need to be or they get their assignments in on time. I mean, part of work is keeping an eye on your people. So that's not but all But then I think about Jane. Jane is, is the people, right? Like you are, you are the, you are the, the people. doer, are the you owner. The you are the people. I, yes, but I have customers that are my clients that I need to make happen. So they, there's always somebody to keep you accountable, you know, no matter what you're in. That's right. That's yeah. right. But the more flexible it's possible to be, obviously, the better it is for everyone. That's the yeah. bottom line. Yeah. And you barriers, think? you know, brick and mortar causes walls. That's it. What do you think? Because before we go, last thoughts from everyone. I'll start Chris, Jane, then Joanna. What do you think we'll see the rest of this year? The, do you think we'll see the the office come back to what it looked like a couple of years ago? Do you think there'll be a revolt a little bit? Do you think companies like yours will, will see more? What do you think are the trends that will go forward as it relates to wholeness and what what people are looking for, what are the workers looking for and what will they demand and what will the companies do for them to accommodate that? Well, let's say, God forbid, there's the pandemic is pretty much behind us and it becomes an endemic and we don't get hit again. So let's just hope that's true. And if it is true, I think we're just going to see a morphing. I, my guess would be about 30 to 40 percent of work is going to go back to being done on site. Certain people like to go to work. Like Joanna's company, you could come in two days out of the five right there. You're down to 40% of what you used to do. People are going to mix it up from now on. I don't think there will be very many. I can't wait to get into some place every day of my life. 
I think over time there will be almost nobody working physically because we can't keep growing and getting more crowded and having people have to go places. But I think it's going to be gradual and there are choices, which is good. Jane, what do you think? What do you think the challenge is? Um, well, I, I do think hybrid work is, is in our future. I know the NASDAQ's trying to give not me, but the people who are the employees of the NASDAQ, um, one day home a week. Um, not so you. You'll be there every day, though. I'm there every day. So I, I could do everything from home, but their studios are much better than my right. home studio. So, um, but, um, so I, I do think hybrid is part of it. And I, I think the flex work is going to be part of it. And um, I, I just think, you know, the pandemic accelerated things that were kind of already starting to happen anyway and made us all see we could really do this. We could really work from home and still be productive. And Joanna, what do you think? There'll be more of an eye on people as the year goes goes on or maybe a little bit less? Maybe it's just a little impetus. Get them, get them in the office and then we'll figure it out later. That's, I think that is correct because I think that we've put things into the, into, we've set policy or expectations based on what we thought would be the best thing for people and the company. And because the company has been successful with people coming together, I think that that set the foundation or the framework. But the commitment is to keep our ear to the ground to find out what's working for employees and then also what's going to attract candidates. Um, and then help the business flourish. And I think it will evolve to a hybrid, you know, um, a hybrid environment where we're really judging people on their productivity and their value rather than where they're located or sitting at any given time. Yeah. And I think getting to that, if you're judging on results, you're judging on productivity. I think what we've been talking about, there's something about if, if people can focus on their individual wholeness, wellness, the things that matter to them, the things that really give them a spark that give them that fuel that I think they'll be more productive. I think their results will be better. I think they'll be happier. I think companies will appreciate more of those results, but we'll see how we'll see how this year goes. And then next March, it will be women's history month again. And then we can check in and see how yeah. our predictions were. Chris, Jane, Joanne, I really appreciate the time that we had this conversation today. Yeah. It's great to be with you so much. It was okay. great. Thanks all for Thank joining. You. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you to my guest and thanks for listening. Subscribe to get the latest episodes each week and we'll see you next time.